I asked Hashem, please tell me, what should I say? How can I inspire everyone for Shabbos Kodesh and Parshas Emel and Bag Boimel? I was listening to a class from Moshe Weinberger. He's literally creating a stir, perhaps an historic stir in, in YU and really in the, American, in the American Jewish world, specifically with purity, with the laws of Tahara, Shmira Sabris. It's amazing. And I was listening to a class that he was giving on Rav Shumba Yechai, and it gave me certain thoughts, answered um, a few interesting kashas, and then a lot of divine providence. So what happened? I had a couple, a very special couple, a young man and a young lady that, young men grew up Jewish, and like most of us, took a veer off the road, and now is coming back, and he's dating a, a Christian lady who's of Bezad Hashem converting to Judaism. And we were speaking about Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkin Hashem Echad. Achtus Hashem, the oneness of God. And then I asked him a question. I said, from this week's parsha, we know that the Torah says it's a mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. What does Kiddush Hashem really mean? So, the Gemara says, Masechas Sanhedrin Ayin Dalad Amud Aleph. And Rashi says a very powerful word. He says, the concept of sanctifying God's name stems from the love of God. Rashi says, because I love the Rabbi Nishim so much, I love the Creator so much, I'm willing to die for certain things, not to lose that relationship. The three things that a person has to give himself is life up, which is idolatry, adultery, and killing another Jew, and even another a non-Jew, according to some we shine is the concept of, and it's really a guideline, it means, as Rav Noach Weimer used to say, if you don't know what you're willing to die for, you haven't begun to live. If a person doesn't know what he's willing to die for, meaning, if, God forbid, someone would tell me, right now, and maybe it's not even God forbid, someone would tell me, go step into that Buddha temple, light up a candle and then bow down to the Buddha or I kill you because I love God so much that's the reason why I'm going to let myself be killed and not walk into the Buddha temple what does that tell us? it tells us that for some reason these three avayers these three transgressions are so destructive to the relationship better to die. Usually, it says, God says, I don't want you to die. If it's a question between dying or eating treif, not kosher, eat not kosher. But there's three things God says that the relationship won't exist. It's not worth living. It's better to die than to transgress these three. And what are they? So one of them we understand very well. As I said to this couple, I said, idolatry, well, if you love God and now you have a choice between giving up your life or turning to another God, and even if it's without the real intention, not worth it, better die. If a person has to kill another Jew or non Jew, as the Gemara Rashi says, Masech Sanedrin actually is specifically a Jew, if a person has to kill another person, another human being, according to the Rambam, it's any human being, in order to keep himself alive, not worth it. Why? The Gemara says a very interesting concept because who says your blood is sweeter than his? Maybe his relationship with God is more important that, to God than yours. That's something that the Gemara tells us. But what about adultery? Why is adultery so something so powerful that a person should, is better to die than to commit adultery? And it tells us how important it is to watch out. How careful a person has to be with the laws of Yichud and the laws of Shmira Senaim and the concept of being so pure, which is really what Rabshun Bai Chai is all about. And the answer is so I was dominating Shmon Esli, struggling with this. And in Shmon Esli, I had like a download in Shmakolein. God gave me the answer that I think perhaps is the explanation. And right after I finished Shmon Esli, someone came over to me. His name is Shapsi which is Shabbos Kodesh. And he said, I need a, a vort, I need, a, I need a, an idea for Shabbos Ufruf. 
So I said, I just downloaded something. I want to share it with you. So I told him the following. I said, we know, Shira Shirim, Rabbi Akiva says, is Kodesh Kadoshim. Kodesh Kadoshim means that the relationship between a husband and a wife is the ultimate level of Kedusha. It's the ultimate, it's the best mashal, the best example of what we could try to relate to a love relationship. Husband and wife. It's the, as the Rambam says, a person's love for God should be like the love that he has for a lady, for his wife. That's called Kodesh HaKodesh. How do I know that? Because Rabbi Akiva says, who is the Rebbe of Shem Bayechai, is that all the Megillahs are Kodesh. Everything is, all the writings are Kodesh. All the Ksuvim are Kodesh. But Shira Shirim, the Song of Songs, which speaks about the love between a husband and wife, is Kodesh Kodesh. Who else is called Kodesh Kodesh? So wait, so I wanted to say the following. I said, do you know what that means? The reason why God says, it's better to die, give up your life, than to commit adultery, is because to commit adultery means to destroy someone's, someone's else's Kodesh Kodesh. That relationship between a husband and wife, and it destroys your own relationship, it destroys your own Kodesh Kodesh. And if the whole point of our relationship with God is to love, is to have a love relationship with God. And to get to that, we have the love relationship in our, in our home between a husband and wife. How can I destroy someone else's? Let's go to Rabbi Shimon Ba'echai. Rabbi Shimon Ba'echai, fascinating. He's called Kodesh Kadoshim. 